Hey art folks, it's Shade, and today I have something really special to bring you that I've been working on for a while and it is my very first metallic watercolor spotlight. I thought it was a good idea to ring in the new year with some sparkly goodness. I will be showing you watercolors from over 20 different brands and talking about the pros and cons and special parts about every single one of them. I think that there's definitely more to metallic watercolors than just gold and some of these brands really do some amazing things so I'm so excited to show them all to you. I'm going to have a part two where instead of looking at the colors by brand I look at them by color and so you can compare to see what you like best but for now Let's get to the brands. I will have links to all of the different brands in the description and on my website. Here is Hydra watercolors. These are really beautiful colors. Some of my favorite ones to work with. So you can see overall that these are really bright beautiful colors. If you're going for candy colors, then these are the colors for you. All the colors you wet really well and as you can see they're pretty opaque. So this is the wash test. This is after 10 minutes with water on it and this is immediately when doing this swatch. It, I think that's pretty darn impressive. Also this is I think the nicest yellow that I have here. It's really nice and bright. I wasn't expecting to like this color so much, this unicorn dust, but I love that it's two different colors depending on whether it's on white and black. It's like pinkish here and greenish here. Super duper shiny. It's really beautiful. And you just have like a really nice range. I have a bunch of these warm colors, cool colors. This green yellow color that I feel like every metallic watercolor brand has to have for some reason and they're just all really beautiful. The least color payoff that you're going to get is with Flying Monkey which appears kind of a gray on the white but then it's blue on the black and when you move it you can see this blue reflection on both sides. That one is obviously the most transparent out of all of them. Just when you compare it to something like Mayhem. But even this, when you allow it to soak in some water, it gets really nice and opaque. But on the first wash in water, it's not so opaque, but you can see it there even. This one is also a little less so, but not severely because I look at this mass tone swatch and then after soaking. Most of these colors don't really move very much and that's the same for any of the metallic watercolors. So this is definitely a sturdy brand. I really enjoy these colors. I turn to these colors a lot when I know I just want like a really nice color payoff. They all worked well in black. You get a really generous amount. They're pillowed, so f overflowing with color. Really beautiful. Here we have the creative kinds. This is going to be a bunch of colors. So I'm going to put them into categories before I start sorting them out because I have so many beautiful colors from this brand. Gold and Gold Star are interesting. I actually prefer Gold Star. It's a little warmer than gold in case you were wondering. So there's gold, gold star, Prosecco, which is obviously a champagne color, antique brass, bronze, rose gold, which is really beautiful, sweet peach, sunset, which is one of my favorites, candy cane, and dusty rose. Ultra Violet, Ooh, 
You know, we have a bunch of gray blue colors. Maybe this one is not bluish enough. It's yellow, peacock, and I don't even have enough space to put these in the frame. But these greens we have evergreen, aquamarine, and rosemary. So this is a huge range, a really beautiful range of subtle variations. I'm going to specifically show you sunset. It's really beautiful. I love the way that the pink and the gold separate. It's really gorgeous. So unlike the hydro colors, these are a bit more subdued colors. Not really in terms of that they don't have color, but they're not like super bright candies. Maybe old-fashioned candies, but not modern candies that are bright neon. This is if you want that really subtle, delicate color combination sort of things that you'd use on wedding invitations and stuff like that. Very elegant. You can't really go wrong with these. And the great thing about these from the creative kinds is also that they're specifically formulated for using with calligraphy. So they're perfect for that, but they're also perfect for watercolors. And you can see, like, you get a ton of color payoff. Actually, this is, I picked up one of the ones with the least color payoff. But, for example, here you can't even see the lines on this side. And this is before, this is without even waiting. And then this is with waiting. Um... Of all the colors with the least payoff is this one. You can see it's a little more transparent, but after waiting, it's a bit more opaque. It'd be nice if this were just a slightly punchier red. Ultraviolet is a cool color. It's purpler here and bluer here. You can really see that here on this mass tone swatch. It has a crazy dispersion that's not normal. <laughs> And uh, this color here, Dusty Rose, is also just beautiful. Also really easy to re-wet as you can see. It doesn't need a lot of scrubbing, also just smells beautiful. It smells like perfume. Kind of crazy. I only have a few colors from Aloha, but I'm so impressed with every single one I have. I don't even understand. How Keiko gets them to be so soft and so pigmented, but not sticky. These are some of the easiest to re-wet, but they're not sticky unlike some other colors. It's kind of amazing. So let's get these in order. These are made by Keiko in Hawaii. So just to show you, Mermaid, it's really white and silvery on white paper, but it's totally golden on black paper, and it has a golden reflection. Crazy color, it looks like the scales of a mermaid's tail. Kona Jazz is part of the coffee set, and it's just a beautiful color. It mixes really well. It's a sort of bronzy color. Again. This pinky goldy color is beautiful, but let's like look at that flash. It's crazy. And as you can see, that really doesn't need to be soaked because the difference between these two is not very strong. Blue Hawaii. And rain cloud. Wish rain clouds looked like that. Yeah, I mean, I've never been disappointed with any paints from Aloha Watercolors, and the metallic paints are no different. They're all just beautiful, a pleasure to work with. So, you guys all know Fine Tech. That's kind of the OG metallic watercolors out here. A bunch of golds and then a silver. 
Uh, they will do. I mean, these are available in lots of places. Um, they're not the most affordable, but they're not the least affordable. They're great for using with calligraphy, although not as great as the creative kinds. It has a range of gold, so whatever type of gold that you want is there. But they definitely are not as opaque and require a lot more water to be wet. So I know that I can get this more opaque than this if I put a lot more water and wait a lot longer. But I wanted the tests to be fair, so I used the same amount of water and waited the same amount of time for all of my tests. And you can see, it's just not at the same level as some of these other paints that I have here. It is beautiful though, and the pigmentation is fine and not chunky, and they don't come off the page, so that is important. Arabic gold is probably the blingiest of all the ones out here. So if these are what you can get, they are good. You see, they're shiny, metallic, but I don't find myself reaching for these so much anymore. These are the Cliffs of Waterton. The Cliffs of Waterton is a newer watercolor maker, and I mostly have thoughts from them. So you can see that the colors are not exactly these kind of, at least the ones that I have, these kind of in-your-face, like, we are super metallic colors overall. They're a lot more glittery than metallic, although if you let them soak, you can get them there, but just from the pan, they're not quite there. Out of all of them, I think that this is the most impressive one, this pinky ballet slipper color. Um, these two colors are actually kind of paired. Sapphire and Antarctica, they're, I think, the same pigment on the bottom, but a different glitter. So this, you can see, has like a gold glitter, and this one has a silver glitter. So I kind of like that idea if you're intentionally going just for the glittery look instead of the metallic look. It's a little fun. Not bad. There's are beam paints from Canada. If you know me, you know I'm a big fan of beam paints, and these four colors are no exception. I really love working with them, and they're a bit different than other stuff. These are actually, I think, all metallic and actually made in Canada, and it's hard to see it on here, but they have a bit of a different character. Then the other ones, you can really see it if you look at how the paints look when you're stirring them up. But the pigments are so fine that sometimes, ah, here you can see it, they kind of clump together into a mass, they kind of float, so that gives it an interesting texture. You may or may not want that. But I really think they're beautiful, and these two colors are just, I'm in love with them especially the Mayan indigo gold. This just looks like a night sky to me. It's so beautiful. These are just so pretty. I love them. There's so much you could do with that. And this one. Ooh. So these are designs by Karen. I have a decent amount of these, but not a crazy amount. I think, maybe. And these are colors that when I first started using them, I literally went, wow. I think I did the same thing with the creative kinds. So you can see this is another one that's a bit brighter, not quite as bright as the Hydra colors. If you want super duper bright colors, Hydra colors are where it's at. These are a bit brighter and more in your face than the creative kinds paints but a bit more subdued than the Hydra Colors paints, but man, you, there's, why? You don't even need to <laughs> re-wet these colors. They're just like popping out at your face. Like I couldn't even see the line for doing this opaque test. Like you just, you just can't see them. They're gone. The lines are gone. If you want paint that's gonna totally cover your paper, this is it. That's it. 
There are a couple colors that are not quite so intense, like this gold green. But generally, they're so impressive. I'm in love with this color, by the way. Copper flash. I think it's just beautiful and so metallic. Definitely the best one out of this bunch. So if you want something you don't have to scrub at, it has really nice colors. Very consistent, actually, among the metallics. These are just amazing. Love them. So these are the Xanadu Aquanut watercolors. I have to say that these colors are not necessarily colors that you would be able to find if you want them because the maker makes a different batch each time and does not record the pigments in her colors. Some of these colors were made custom for me because uh, since I don't use certain colors, I wanted to be sure about what colors were going to be in my paints. Um, so obviously these are not really metallic paints. Part of the selling point of these is that they're sparkly paints, but you can probably see that the sparkle is very subtle. It's not very pronounced. You can see it a bit on the black paper. Uh, you can barely notice it on the white paper and quality is inconsistent and some of the colors are quite chalky with honestly almost no sparkle that I can find. Even if you're only going for really glittery, these are not the colors that I would recommend out of the batch. This one this is a single pigment color with Prussian blue that was made just for me. I think is the nicest because it doesn't give a super high amount of bling, but it gives a little thing and I feel like that can be enhancing to a painting. Um, and I think this, what this color is doing is interesting because it has a yellow ochre in it, so that's separating a bit. I don't know if you can see it on the camera from the purple. So that's interesting. But some of the colors are really chunky and have a bad distribution. It depends. It's very... Since every time it's different, it, the batches are different. Studio Julia K. I'm in love with these colors. I didn't expect to be as in love with them as I am, but what really draws me to them is that the colors are so unique. If you want colors that you've never seen anywhere else, and those are these colors, and they have really cool names too. So this is the most classical one that we have, Glamora. It's like a gold, coppery, bronze-ish sort of color. As you can see also, super easy, nice to real wet, good payoff, beautiful color. This is my favorite. Every time I use this color, I'm just like, oh my god, it's so pretty. This beautiful, deep purple. I feel like you don't often see deep, dark metallics, and I love it. The other color that I like is this one. I think it's Aeneid or Aeneid. It's got this green coming out and then this curious sort of gun model shine. Like, what is that? That's so awesome. And Julia is also super duper nice. So just like all of these colors, beautiful, 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 most unique. This is the one with the least amount of opacity, but it feels just like snow. <laughs> it feels like a snowman and it's just so glittery and shiny. I love it. So here's Artistic Isle. I don't have very many colors, metallic colors from Artistic Isle, but what I have is actually really impressive to me because I have I gotta say, the dots are the tiniest dots I've ever seen. They almost barely qualify as a dot. I was really worried that I'd be able to get enough to do these swatches, but there was definitely enough because the color is just so strong. And I mean, just look. This is from the Irish Blessing set. 
and it's just really great. This is, I think, my favorite color, Asteroid. The uh, Asteroid, Aquarius, Kryptonite, and Meteor are from a space-themed set that I got super, super, duper, 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 duper tiny dots from. And you can see that I didn't need very much. They're really beautiful colors. They rewet really nicely. They're great. Not super duper unique colors, but really great colors to work with. Since some things I only have one color, I'm just going to do these all together. So this is from A. Gallo. This is the gold. It's a sort of antique gold. It reminds me very much of the Schmincke's version of the gold, which you'll be seeing very shortly. It rewets nice. It's nice. This is the gold color from Gansai Tambi. It's a bit different than what most of the brands call gold. It's more like a bronze color. It is way more opaque than I remembered, and it rewets really nicely. This is the Schmincke Gold, and it's nice. It rewets nicely, feels like Schmincke quality, and you can see what I mean about these two being very similar. This one is a bit warmer, but they're very similar. I was lucky enough that I have these two colors from Blue Pine Arts, and I don't generally think of Blue Pine Arts as a metallic company, but these are gorgeous, especially this Rose Dory. Do you see that color shift? That is so cool. And the Gilded Leaf has that a little bit too. They rewet really nicely, beautiful colors, so much fun to work with. Other colors are really great too. These are by Trupti from India. These are from a small company called Toride. And I love that this is the Kakakafo color. I was thinking about doing an Animal Artist Collective video on this bird. And this is exactly the color of the bird. It's really nice, but it's not super duper glittery, but it is a really pretty color. And I haven't seen a yellow, metallic yellow that's like this, a sort of lemony color with a pretty good payoff. And then last is this Ludwig from Eventually Everything Mixes, and the consistency of this is so nice. The color of this is so nice. I really like it. One, I think, the one metallic color that I have from Earth. Eventually Everything Mixes. Here's Earth Mineral Arts. Lost in Colors. Fold the Sea. And MCM Art. So Earth Mineral Arts also is a brand that doesn't really do glitter colors, but this is just the most unique and crazy glitter color. It's actually quite stable on here, surprisingly, even though it's so chunky. And if you want a different type of glitter metallic, this has got you. It's kind of insane. You can actually see it, I think, standing off of the paper a bit. This is another beautiful black gold sort of color. Really nice for night skies. Pink. And a copper. So I hope that you enjoyed looking at all of these brands. Let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. And Stay tuned for part two, where you get to see the color comparisons. Thank you to my patrons, and Happy New Year to everybody. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time, and until then, be gentle with yourself. Bye!